Hi, my name is Nick Smith, and I wanted to talk about business intelligence and give a brief history about where we've been, where we are now, and where we're going. And probably more important to you, why should you care? So, what is business intelligence? Well, I took a look at the Wikipedia page, and the definition of business intelligence was pretty long. And after reading through the definition, I was kind of like, what? So I just read the first sentence. And after reading the first sentence, I was still confused. BI seemed hard. And is that what it really took for a business to be intelligent? So I thought, okay, well, what is intelligence? Is it knowledge and understanding? Is it about meaning and context? Is it about foresight? To solve complex problems to make better decisions? Well, okay, who makes decisions? Typically, people make decisions. Unless you're the Terminator. Well, how do people make decisions? Well, we make decisions all the time. To go all in or fold. To hold, sell, or buy. And sometimes we make poor decisions, like this, for example, or this, or this. And there were some movies that probably we could have done without, you kind of get the picture. So intelligence was all about decisions, and decisions were made by people. Well, what makes a good decision? Well, how about information? And does intelligence plus information equal the right decision? Well, what is information? Well, throughout the history of time, information was used to share stories, to learn with books, which was made more popular by Gutenberg when he invented the printing press. It was used to discover things, which helped Christopher Columbus use this to find this. It helped keep track of things in these types of situations. Or here. And over time, information helped provide answers to unlock secrets, which allowed for innovation from something big, to small to smaller to help build something big again so information was all about answers and answers allowed people to make decisions but how did business people get answers well they had something called data not that data they had business data about people products and about places they also had questions which products are the best how are my sales performing and how are my people doing but before they could get the answers they needed insight into the data otherwise it was just guesswork like pin the tail on the donkey except you're the donkey data had value it was precious and where do you put something precious well it needed to be stored I mean, before the 1960s data was stored here in a filing cabinet and when computers arrived it started to go other places like here and here um, but storing data that way was kinda risky business and it was difficult to manage eventually data would be stored in something that looked like this which they called a database which is invented by Edgar Codd in 1969 which is about the same time we landed on the moon so the database provided a way to store business data about people, about products, and about places. But it wasn't that straightforward. To get the data in here required a lot of expertise. And the business needed a way to enter data. And then in the 1970s, business applications were created. And so was Disco. Why business applications? Well, they provided a better way to collect the data, and you might be familiar with some of these. So the database was all about data storage, and business applications and the database were about ease of data entry and more data. Well, what about access? Did data plus access provide answers? Well, in the beginning, access wasn't easy. For example, you couldn't drive up to a database and be like, hey, can I have some data, please? It wasn't that easy, and data was coming from multiple places. It was coming from business applications, and it was in the database. Why not access one at a time? Well, they tried that with reports, but those were one-dimensional and could only provide access in silos, which meant the data was 
fragmented. They needed more insightful access across multiple locations, so they moved the data into a data warehouse, which was made popular by these guys in the early 1980s. And there were other things going on in the 80s, like Lionel Richie and Wham was making it big. But now the data could be organized, and it could come from multiple locations to be managed and accessed, and now the data could be served. So data access and management equaled consumption. And this is what I like to call business intelligence 1.0, where BI tools could report and analyze on the data. And in 1989, the term BI was born. BI vendors started to pop up. And they promised more access across multiple locations to report and analyze on the data. Well, why did they want to do this? Well, they wanted to make money for one, but more data equaled more demand. And the business wanted data faster. And at this point, BI was all about performance. So what happened next? Well, the data didn't stop, and along came the World Wide Web, and things began to move more quickly. The business needed answers, and fast. And in the 90s, more BI tools popped up. And there was lots of them. There was information management tools. There was query reporting and analysis tools. There was performance management and data visualization tools. They were everywhere. And they still didn't work, because the data usually wound up here which became this, which eventually became this, which prompted this guy to write this book and created a whole bunch of frustration. Because there was no single version of the truth. So in summary, BI tools created more access, and more access allowed for multiple versions of the truth and more frustration. There was a new challenge of data management. Well, what about cost? All of these tools were expensive, and they were hard to maintain. The BI vendors needed a way to offer more functionality at a reduced cost. So this is when the BI platforms emerged, and that led to acquisitions. And all of these vendors mostly wound up here. And this is what I call Business Intelligence 2.0, where there are more BI tools, more BI functionality, offline and online access, and market consolidation. And at this point, business intelligence was a top priority. It was big time. It was bigger than LeBron James. But it still didn't work. Something was broken. Kind of like Charles Barkley's golf swing. business people were still confused. And if we go back to the definition of business intelligence, well, things hadn't changed. What wasn't working? Well, the business still couldn't get the answers. It wasn't about people. It was about systems and people accessing those systems. What was wrong with that? Well, it required access who provided access well typically it was IT and what happens when 80 percent of the people call IT for data a lot of frustration why not go around IT well the BI tools were not intuitive and business people didn't have the time it was about intuitive access and timeliness of data BI was about usability turning data into the right format so it could be easily consumed by more people and easily managed by IT. But it wasn't just about the data that was in here, there was unstructured data. What's the difference? Well, unstructured data came from places like blogs and wikis and emails, it came from documents and presentations and videos, and there was a lot of it. So BI was all about getting the right data at the right time to the right person. And BI needed to be people-centric, where you're in the middle and you have access to the right information, and IT can provide access to more people. The old school way of doing BI didn't work, because people make decisions, not systems. It was time for a change. The BI of the 90s was iced out. Business people needed to do more to collaborate, to search, and communicate 
about their questions and their answers and drive innovation. Well, today there are new pressures. There's an economic crisis, but times are changing and BI can work the way that you do to provide better insight and better decisions for more people and drive innovation. How can you get it? Well, you already have it. Follow the new BI conversation here. Thanks for listening.